All right, let's continue off our last little project here with our array frame. We saw last time how you could use the buttons uh, basically to fill the array. Our own little custom method here called show list, which would go through the list, clear it out, fill it up. Now what we want to do is we want to look at how does the user actually interact with this list. Well, we know once it has numbers in it, they can click on numbers and do stuff. So really all you want to know is when they click on the list or they select an item in the list and hit a button, you'd like to know which item they have selected and what the value of that item in the list is. So let's do that. Let's basically make, uh, I'll do it two different ways here. I'll add a third button here. And when they hit the third button, I'm going to print out what they have selected in this text box. So here we go. I double click the button and let's write a little code. And the code's pretty easy here using the list. All I want to do here is there's very simple methods to tell me what the user has selected in the list box. So it's going to send you back, just like an array, it's going to send you back an index position in the list. And the first spot in the list is zero, just like an array. So all I say is here is integer position is list one dot get. And you can already see here what I can get. I want to get the selected index. And so get selected index. And then if I want to put that in the text box, I can do a little J text field one. I know I'm using great names here. Set the text. Now those that are smart will remember I have to make this a string. So integer to string position. Okay, just a little conversion. So let's give this a run here, see what happens. Now I'm going to remember to fill my list up. So that button filled it up with random values. And now let's select an item and then hit the button. Three, five, the first item, zero, the very last item, 19. Okay, so it all works just fine. Now here's some other things you can do with the list. I just want to show you what happens if there's nothing selected in the list. This is a very popular thing. Nothing is selected right now. When I hit the button, negative one is sent back as the answer. When it says, hey, get me the selected index. When nothing's selected, negative one is the number that's sent back. You know that's not a possible index position, which is why it's so good. If you ask if the selected value is negative one, or sorry, the selected index is negative one, you know nothing is selected at the time. Whereas then I change it, that's a one, that's a two, that's a three. Okay, so that's pretty good. How do you get the actual values out? Well, there's two ways you could get the values out of this thing. Right now when I hit the button, I had done that line. Let me just comment those ones out. If you actually wanted to get the value out, you could have done something like this. We know it's a string that we're going to pull out, even though it looks like a number, the list store strings. So I could say string stuff equals list one. Let me type that a little slower. Get selected item. And that basically pulls out the value out of there. And then I could say J text field one, set your text to stuff. This works equally as well. This is actually getting the value from the selected item. So when I run this one, fill it, 90, select, and it puts the 90 in. Pretty good. Now, that interaction has been using the buttons, right? I'm always using a button to get the value. Maybe you just want the user to double click or single click inside the list. Let's show you how to do that. So what I'm going to do here with my list, let's try doing something like whichever item the user clicks on, let's turn it into the number 99. Okay. Now to code this, it's a click event on the list itself, right? You're probably clicking on an item. Now this isn't the absolute perfect way to do it, but it's a nice beginner way for now to do it. Okay. So we'll do it that when the list has a click event in it. So I double click the list and it pops open list one action performed. This is just a general event. Okay, we can get more specific later on in the course to actually detect like single click, double clicks, left clicks, right clicks, things like that. But this is good to get us started. So they just clicked on an item in the list. And now I want to figure out 
which slot did they just click on because that's the slot, the index position I want to change to 99. So I'll just basically repeat the little code I have above. List one, get selected index. I'm going to do a quick check to make sure it's not negative one. Now it may sound silly because you're saying, well, they clicked. It has to be something. But maybe the list was very short, like it only filled this space right here. And maybe they've clicked down here in the corner and there's nothing selected. So actually having nothing selected is a possibility. So I'm just going to take care of that. So I'm going to say if the position that came back was negative 1, I know that nothing is selected. I'm going to do a little fancy code here called return. Return basically means leave this block of code. And so it's not going to continue to do any more code after this. So return means return, get out of here. So that's good. That saves me from the problem of nothing selected. Now if I get past that point, there must have been something selected. And so let me change that item selected to 99 and refill the list. So here I go. I'm going to change that item to 99. A, slot position, because position is the index that was selected, equals 99. Now I have to redraw the list. So I know I had that little method I wrote earlier called show list. So I call show list. And one little annoying thing is, is once I re-clear and show the list, the slot I had selected will be now no longer selected. So to actually make this list select my old slot again, I can say list one, set, oh, let me find the right method here. And it is the select method and I select position. And that's it. That should reselect whatever the position was that was selected before. Okay, you have to do that, these kind of things when you deal with components. So, basic idea. Find out what slot was selected. If it's negative one, nothing selected, so get out of there. Otherwise, turn that slot in the array to 99, redraw the list, reselect the items. Here we go. Is it gonna work? Cross your fingers and Fill the list, and here go my clicks. That's my double click. Double click, double click, double click, double click, double click, double click, double click. Beautiful. It's totally working, right? You can see here, if I actually rerun this program, I'll try to design it a little longer here. I'll make the window way bigger. I'll try to show you how our negative one code protected us. Right now I have nothing selected, but I'll click here. It actually is running that event, but it's leaving right away because I have nothing selected. So that's nice. Perfect. This is sort of the basics of lists. Um, and those two methods that we showed you there, or maybe the three methods, are the most popular ones you're going to use. Okay, You're going to use get selected index. You're going to use get selected, whoops, you're going to say get selected item, and sometimes you'll set the selected item with list.select. Okay, automatically select something for the user. And that's it. That's your basics with lists. Now you can at least start to work with your arrays in a more visually pleasing way than the system out. Thanks for watching. Hopefully you have fun with this.